Hello and welcome back to Educator.com in this lesson on sensation of perception, specifically thresholds and signal detection theory. Sensation of perception is a big part of psychology. Uh, as you notice up here, it takes six to eight percent of the multiple choice questions. So there are a lot of ideas, a fair amount of physiology in here, as well as some basic physics. And so um, summary is everything that organisms know about the world is first encountered when stimuli in the environment activate sensory organs, initiating awareness of the external world. Perception, on the other hand, involves the interpretation of the sensory inputs as a cognitive process. And so what we're going to be looking at in this unit is sensory transduction, how waves and sounds and chemicals become electrical signals in the brain, and then also how culture and experience can influence and modify our perceptual processes. And we'll look at the idea of perceptual set, context effects, etc. And so we've got the sensation up here, and we've got the perception down here. So it's a fun unit. This is where you're going to find some optical illusions. But before we get to that, we have to do some of the basics. General properties of sensory systems. Data reduction system. Any system that selects, analyzes, and condenses information. See, here's the thing. Just visually, everyone gets about a million bits of information per second. You can't deal with a million bits of information per second. And so your brain filters out what it thinks it doesn't need. And so that means that you're paying attention to certain things and ignoring other things. And so when you're selecting, analyzing, and then condensing or removing the unnecessary parts, that makes our whole sensory system data reduction system, or a data reduction system. Uh, we'll be looking at perceptual features, which are basic stimulus patterns, and we'll see what those are. And then sensory coding taking the sensations that we have from the external world and changing their format so that the brain can understand them. Sensation and perception. Sensation. Information arriving from sense organs. Eyes, ears, touch, smell, taste. Those organs are going to be sending the brain particular information. And it does it in very predictable ways. However, perception is the mental process of organizing those sensations into meaningful patterns. And we're going to see where some of those patterns can be modified in such a way where you're experiencing th something that you think you're not, or you're not experiencing something you think you should be. It's kind of bizarre, our, our brain. Our brain is uh, constantly playing tricks on us. So some terms that you're going to be looking at in this unit include psychophysics, sensory transduction, absolute threshold, difference threshold, signal detection, sensory adaptation, bottom-up processing, top-down processing, and Weber's law. So just wanted to throw those terms out there here at the beginning. We're going to be seeing them in the slides to come. Psychophysics. It's the study of relationships. No, not who's dating who. This is not a Brangelina sort of a thing. But it's the relationship between physical characteristics of stimuli, such as their intensity and our psychological experience of them. One kind of silly example at the moment would be noise versus sound. Sound is going to have a psychological experience of one way of viewing that is to say listening to sounds, but unwanted sounds are going to be noise. And so when we're thinking about noise versus sounds, sometimes your parents will say, ah, turn down that noise. That's because they are hearing the music that you're listening to differently. They're having a different psychological experience than you are. You're hearing it as sound, not only sound, you're hearing it as music. You're hearing it as something that is meaningful to you in your life. Ernst Weber. You gotta love these German names. Ernst Weber. So he's a one of the founders of modern experimental psych. He influenced psychophysics and he studied weight perception. And uh, one of the things that he discovered is that there was, and this is going to be the key word here, a proportional relationship between the increase of magnitude of weight and the ability to make the discrimination between the weights. And so the idea is uh, and this is a demonstration that I used to do, is I would have these little film canisters. They're about a little over an inch high, 
and about half an inch around, and they used to hold canisters of film, but they're these little plastic containers. And I would put in one of the containers a penny, and then another one, two pennies. Another one would have four pennies. Another one would have eight pennies. Another one would have 10 pennies. And so I would make all of these different levels of pennies. And I would say, okay, pick up these two. Can you tell that there's a difference between the weight of those two? And what happens is, is that you might be able to tell the difference between one penny and two penny, but you might not be able to tell the difference between nine pennies and pen, nine pennies and ten pennies. That's because there is this idea of discrimination between the weights and the proportion. And so, a guy named Fechner came up with um, uh, the idea later and called it Weber's law. So, Weber Fechner's law or Weber's law is the ratio of intensity to have a just noticeable difference, one of your vocab terms. Just noticeable differences, how, to what degree does it have to be that we can notice the distinction between this level and this level, between this weight and this weight? And so, um, with, uh, or with Weber, he studied not only absolute thresholds, but also with uh, Fechner, the just noticeable difference. And noticing that there's some proportions that are gonna be different, and we'll look at that when it comes to vision and sound and brightness and, and some of the other things uh, in a little bit. 